This week we got a brand new video from Brackies about Gato. We also got yet another beta release and I have a really cool arcade implementation using the Gato engine that you're just gonna have to see. I'm Stay at Home Dev and it's This Week in Gato. As probably a lot of you already know, uh, Brackies released a new 3D game tutorial on his channel. Uh, it already has 100,000 views in two days. This one specifically works within 3D games. He already did a 2D game one. It's awesome to see that there are more videos coming from Brackies. It just means there's going to be more and more people seeing what Gato can do and, and learning how to do it, and particularly in 3D, because I think a lot of people get focused on 2D, and there's a whole other dimension out there, folks. The whole thing clocks in at about 49 50 minutes, so there's plenty of content. Check it out. There's going to be a link in the description. Not that he needs the traffic. So many views. Additionally, we had 4.4 beta 3. Yeah, we're on number three already. This one's a little bit different from the last week. There are actually some specific updates that they made, some fixes. The UID uh, made an appearance. It was actually kind of interesting listening. Can you actually listen to comments? Reading, reading comments. It was really interesting reading the comments about the, uh, the UID update that they added. Uh, some people are not not too happy about it. There's now an upgrade tool that you can use to get your projects from 4.3 to 4.4. I have to admit, I've yet to take a look at it to, to see how well it works. It is supposed to make it an easier process. Another thing that I'm not super surprised has caused issues is the new embed tab that you have at the top. Very cool, but there have been some issues with it. So they are they're fixing those. And then there was something about light map baking. All in all, again, beta getting through the bugs, and then it's on to 4.5, which is new features. The one thing I, I admittedly really like about this new format um, is basically I can kind of do whatever I want every week. It gives me the ability to spotlight things that don't really fit within games or, or applications or, or projects of any kind. And something came up this week that was just too cool of a project not to talk about. If you're on the subreddit for Gato, you probably already saw this, but it's this arcade machine made in the Gato engine where you actively draw your characters on this piece of paper. You insert it into the machine. Um, I'm not sure how that works. And it gets put into the game. What a cool idea. I think the background for this is this is made for, for kids with special needs uh, so that they can create and draw something and then put it into a game. And I cannot tell you how much I love this idea and the implementation of it. And so congrats to uh, J.W. Otto. What a cool, what a cool thing. This is awesome. I love it. I want to give some love to you. So go check it out. I believe he actually has a website. I'm going to put a link to that in the description and um, just bravo. Well done. So this week is a kind of a, it's a small one, but I don't know that everyone knows about theming. And I'm not talking about theming within the control system, the, the UI system of the engine, but rather how to change the look of your editor. I did make a video about it. I think it was last year. I will admit there's a there's a look to the engine by just the, the default, but sometimes you get a little tired of looking at the same color. If you go to editor and whoop, not command palette. If you go to editor and editor settings, bring that window on on back over to this screen. If you go to editor and editor settings, there's a, a theme option under the interface over here on the left side. And you do have presets that they they've built in. I'm actually using a sort of Frankenstein version of Passive Stars theme, and you can change a lot of things within this setup. Obviously, you have your, your dark and light options. Also, shout out in the comments if you use a light version. I have never seen anyone use a light version of the editor. I'd love to know if you do. Um, but you can change your base color. You can change that to any color you want. So if you're really a big fan of radioactive uranium, there you go. Change that back. You can change your accent color. I have it as blue. I don't know why I have it as blue. And you do have small things like border sizes and corner radiuses, radii, I guess. And you can, of course, save these themes and share them and then load them into your, your editor. In fact, I'm kind of surprised there's not a website that is uh, dedicated to, to engine themes. Now, additionally, you can also change the font of your editor. I'm using the Enter font. So if you go to Editor and scroll down here, there's actually a couple of font options that are really important. One, you can change the main font that you're using. So that's everything that's in your Scene Editor, your, your Inspector tab. You can pick a different bold font if you want to, but then you can also change your coding font. I'm using uh, JetBrains. Another big one that is very important if you're ever gonna make videos uh, within the editor or anything like that 
is to adjust your, your font sizes and make them as big as you can so people can see them. I've learned that the hard way. You want to make sure people can see what you're working on if you're making videos. Another setting in here, if you're working on a larger screen, if you're working on 4K, for example, which I actually do. I don't know if that's weird. I work on a TV. It's very, very large. Basically, you get four screens. But if you do work in something that's like 4K, you're going to want to adjust the display scale. So I've got mine to 150%. It's going to take all of these values and just bump everything up so it matches that, that larger resolution just a little bit better. It's actually a lot bit better. A whole bunch of other things that you can change. You can change the colors in your GD script, colors of individual nodes, colors of gizmos. In fact, there's a lot of things within the colors. I think the main point is that the engine is extremely customizable. And I don't think that a lot of people are aware of that. Check out some of those settings, see if you can make a cool theme. And if, if you've got one that you really like, share it. And finally, an update on the hobby game videos that we have been talking about the last couple of weeks. It's going to happen. We're going to do a video, I'm thinking bi-weekly, of uh, hobby games made in the Gato engine. Now that, that begs the question, what the heck is a hobby game? Well, I think, in my view, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not commercial. It can definitely be a commercial project. I feel like it has to be less studio, maybe more solo developer or, you know, small, small team. And I think a big aspect of it is it doesn't necessarily have to be finished or even close to finished. It could just be a prototype or an idea. Like to me, the five games uh, a week that we do every Saturday, and we've been doing it for two years now, which is, that's a long time. It's to showcase what the engine can do and what, what people are doing with it especially in the realm of a, a commercial product. A more hobby-focused video should really be focused on, to me, giving feedback uh, to those individuals. So in that sense, we're going to be talking about game jams. We're going to be talking about projects that people are working on for fun. Um, and maybe just stuff that is interesting and, and different. We're going to handle the submission process a little bit different because I, I do think there's going to be a little bit more communication uh, between myself and, and whomever is going to send in something. So I'm going to put a link in the description that's going to give more information about how you can submit your own hobby project that's made in the Gato Engine. Again, this could be something you made in a game jam, something that you're just working on. And honestly, if you're looking for feedback on something and you, you want to hear what people think about what you're working on, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm really excited about it because I think it opens up a different avenue of, of showcasing people's work. And that again is, that's what a lot of this channel is about. So check out the link in the description if you're interested in submitting something. I look forward to seeing what you're working on and I'm sure everyone else is too. Bato, a photography obsessed bat, is on a mission to snap the ultimate picture of the full moon in batography. Winner of Got a Wild Jam 48, you'll explore a sleepy, moonlit town brimming with sassy animal neighbors, helping them with tasks while gathering elusive mooncakes. Run, climb, glide, and use your trusty camera to solve puzzles and communicate with the locals. Originally released on itch.io, the Steam version ups the challenge with extra mooncakes and achievements. Can you time everything just right for the perfect lunar shot? Number two. Stray Path blends free cell card mechanics with roguelike exploration, inviting you to flip and drag your way through a randomly generated world. Choose from a vibrant roster of adventurers, then optimize your deck by deciding which skill cards and items to keep or discard. Every card flip could reveal a helpful item, a fearsome foe, or a tempting treasure chest. Tinker with over 100 equipment pieces to construct wildly different loadouts, from stalwart tank builds to devastating glass cannons and see how far you can push each new run. Number three. Birdful is a short, relaxing idle game where you attract and care for birds in a cozy backyard setting. Everything here is hand-drawn. And as for the birds, you can feed them, you can care for them while you discover a variety of unique feathered friends. Build special facilities to boost bird visits, form loving pairs for more valuable eggs, and decorate your space to improve your odds of spotting rare species. Featuring tranquil sounds, a hand-drawn art style, and offline progression, Birdful offers a laid-back escape into the world of bird watching and egg collecting. Runa and the Chai Kuru Legacy combines classic 3D platforming and puzzle solving in a richly woven fantasy world inspired by Latin American landscapes. The game just had its full release with a very positive rating on Steam, 
In the game, you guide the brave Runa through lush jungles, crumbling ruins, and hidden caves to uncover the secrets of the ancient Chai Kuru civilization. Wield mystical boleadoras and unlock special abilities, overcoming obstacles and battling enemies that stand in your way. With vivid environments, a compelling story, and plenty of collectibles to discover, this family-friendly adventure invites you to explore at your own pace and restore the land's lost mystic power. And before we get to our last spot, congrats to last week's winner, Omega. Be sure to vote for your favorite in the comments to have them included in this year's Gato Game Awards. And like last year, just because a game doesn't win its week, it doesn't mean it can't be included in the awards. Number five. Flocking Hell is a roguelite strategy game where each turn-based level takes just five minutes, enough time to explore, expand your cities, and prepare for demonic invasion. Once you've played your cards and run out of turns, the demons pour in, putting your carefully arranged defenses to the test. Success means safeguarding at least one city. Failure means your pastures fall to a delightfully sinister horde. Between the whimsical sheep, approachable deck-building mechanics, and endless variations of challenge, no two runs in flocking hell ever feel the same. 